Welcome back, Hampshire chemistry students. Continuing with our ideas of Le Chatelier's principle, we're going to be taking a look at the example homework, okay, and be talking about how we can understand how to figure out some of these different types of problems. Okay, you should have your own version on the Google Doc, and this one's pretty easy to type in. I just have it on here so I can do it with you guys. So let's take a look here. Okay. What we need to do is we need to look at this equilibrium. Okay, how do I know this is an equilibrium? Well, it's got a double-sided arrow. That means that this reaction is constantly taking some nitrogen dioxide and with a little bit of heat is able to break it apart into nitrogen monoxide and O2. Okay, but of course, since it's got the double-sided arrow, sometimes these things are also gonna be combined to the other side. Okay, so it's going back and forth and back and forth. It's an equilibrium. Okay. So let's see what happens here because my goal is I need to identify the direction of a shift of this equilibrium, either left, right, or no shift based on the stress, the action that is taken. And then we'll also fill in some information about the various different pieces here. So if I add some NO2, I want to see how that is affecting my relationship. And I kind of like to visualize this. Okay, so what's happening here is we've now added a bunch of NO2 to my left side of my equation. Okay, think of this kind of like a seesaw. Okay, it was nicely balanced, but now that balance has shifted because we added a bunch of stuff to the left-hand side of this equation. Sometimes I literally even get my hands out here and go like, oh, no, opposite Mr. Bartlett, there we go, and shifted to the left. So in order to fix this balance, I'm going to need to move my balance to the other side. Whoop. Okay. I'm going to need to shift my reaction to the right side. Okay. We are doing the we are balance fixing our balance here. Now to help you out with some of these different types of things, okay, what we've provided on if you look on Haiku is also a handy dandy little PowerPoint here. It goes through a couple different examples. So like the one we just talked about, okay, that when you add more gram, uh, ga gaseous or aqueous reagent, right? Those are your, pro those are your reactants. Uh, you will shift to the opposite side. So let's look back here. Okay, when I added more reagent to this side, we're gonna shift to the opposite side. It's basically what's happening here is this NO2 is being used up. Okay, I'm taking all this extra NO2 I have and I'm moving it to the other side of my balance. Okay, so I'm going to shift this to the right, to the opposite of the NO2. Now, the NO2 is then going to have some other things happen. We want to describe the effects on the different parts of the reaction. Now, since it's the NO2, the one we're changing, I'm not going to worry about that for this problem. But I want to think about it for this nitrogen monoxide, my green guy up here. Okay, so we need to look at this guy and think about, huh, if I am using up all of this NO2 and moving things to the right-hand side, that means that I'm going to be making more of my NO, right? Because that's on the right side of the reaction. So I'm going to see these guys increase. Okay, shift to the right, more of the things on the right. And hey, look who's also on the right. We have N, we have the O2, the oxygen. So by shifting to the right, we're also going to increase our amount of O2 as well. And now our last one, though, is temperature. Okay. Now, temperature is a weird one, right? We talked about with enthalpy, right? talking about like the delta H. So we might have, we've done calculations, right? Where we've had heat represented by that delta H symbol. But for right now, we're not worried about the numbers. I'm just interested in where is heat in my reaction, right? So in order to use up this NO2, we have to use up some of our heat. If I'm using up some of my heat, that means that I'm going to be moving to the right side of my reaction. Using up heat is going to decrease my amount of heat, the temperature in my sample. Okay? So think about it. When I moved right, the things on the right increased. When I moved left, the things on the left decreased. Okay, let's take a look at the other example here. Okay? Let's think instead of 
adding some NO2. Let's say we removed NO2. Look how teeny tiny that is. Okay. Now my sample is stressed, is imbalanced in a different way. Okay. It's kind of like now that if I had a balanced seesaw and I took a bunch of the weight off the left-hand side, that means that my seesaw is now going to tip this side. Let's see if I can get this right this time on camera. It's going to tip this way. Okay. So again, in order to make this balance, we have to return things to normal. Okay. I'm going to need to add more weight to this side of my equation. And again, if you look at the notes that are on Haiku for you, okay, when we remove some of a reagent, some of a reactant, you're going to shift to the same side as that chemical. Okay. So the same side as the NO2 is the left side of the reaction. So we are shifting back to rebalance out the NO2s. So hey, if we are going to be adding more, if we're going to be in, shifting to the left-hand side, everything on the right-hand side is going to have to decrease. Oh, my handle's right here. And hey, since we're shifting to the left-hand side, who else is on the left? Well, the side with our heat. So we are going to see an increase in the heat of our reaction. Okay? So we shift left. Everything on the left increases. We shift, we, uh, uh, when we shift left, everything on the product side decreases. Okay. So let's take a look at some more examples here. Okay. This time we're going to increase temperature. Okay. Now I know a lot of the time when we would do some of those enthalpy calculations, it was hard to kind of understand what temperature was in an equation. All I really want you to do the same idea that hey I have way more heat in my reaction I want to balance this out right it is currently weighted down so I'm going to increase the opposite side to make it match so when I add more of a reactant again back to the screen cap back to this guy here when I add more of a reactant we are shifting to the opposite side so what is our opposite side of the heat? That is the right-hand side is the opposite side of our heat. Okay, everybody, that means that everybody on the product side is going to see an uh, uh, increase. Because right? that's the right-hand side of the reaction. And everybody who's on the left-hand side who's being pointed away from, being shifted away from, is going to decrease. So that means that now the NO2 is going to decrease. Now you might notice a pattern here that when we had a shift to the right, look at this. My NO2, my NO, and my O2 both increased. Just like the exact same thing that when I shifted right up here. Right? So we're going to see a lot of those patterns come up a lot here. That as long as you can identify the shift, identifying how things increase or decrease is actually really simple. Right? So lastly, let's take a look at this example. If I decrease my heat way, way, way down, right? that means that I'm going to need to replace this heat. I am removing a reagent. So I'm going to shift to the same side as that reagent. Okay. The same side is going to be the left hand side. We are shifting to the left. Okay. So hey, to help us out here, we're shifting to the left. That's going to tell me that my two things that are on the right hand side of my reaction, my products are both going to decrease. Okay. And who's ever on the left-hand side with my, uh, my sample that's being removed from, this guy is going to increase. So you notice that, again, we have kind of that pattern where it's the opposite. When we shift it to the right, the NO2 decreased. When we shift it to the left, the NO2, NO2 increased. So let's keep looking at some more examples here. Okay. 
The last kinds of examples we're going to look at are when you deal with pressure. Okay. Pressure. Oh, so I actually didn't even, let's flip back to this screen capture here because Mr. Bartley just noticed that he even has a section here that says talking about increasing and decreasing temperature. Okay. And you'll notice that it actually follows the exact same rules, except this time it just talks about that when you increase temperature, you shift to the side without heat, also known as the, si the opposite side. Okay. When you decrease temperature, you move to the side that's with heat, also known as the same side. So you notice how these are like the exact same kinds of things here. So the last one now though is pressure. Okay, pressure okay, deals with the different amounts of molecules. Okay, so when I look back at my problem here, hey, okay, that's not what Mr. Bartlett wants. That's what Mr. Bartlett wants. When I look back at my problem here, okay, you can count up the number of mo the molecules that are present. Okay? What happens here is I have two NO2 molecules and just some heat. And over on the right-hand side, I have two NOs and one oxygen. So on the left side, I have two molecules. And on the right side, I have three molecules. Now, of course, in any actual reaction, like there'd be billions and billions and billions of these, but the ratio still stay the same. There will always be less molecules on the reactant side than there will be on the product side. So when I'm increasing pressure, hey, think about like a piston in a car, hey, right? When that piston pu pushes down, those gas molecules are getting squeezed together. They're gonna start bouncing and create more pressure. What the system wants to do is it wants to go back to equilibrium where everything was balanced, where there would be less pressure. So think about Boyle's law. Who's gonna have less pressure? The guy with two molecules bouncing around or the guy with three molecules? Whenever we increase pressure, we are going to go to the side with the fewer gas molecules. Okay, so by increasing pressure, we're going to go to the side with the two gas molecules. We're going to shift to the left. Whenever we go, whenever we decrease pressure, we are going to go to the side with the more molecules, right? If I decrease my pressure, I want to bring it back up. I want to go back to normal. I want to go to the right. Okay. And then to figure out what's the rest of these going to be, we're just going to follow the same patterns. If I write, I would expect a decrease, an increase, an increase. And here's an example where we had a, a decrease over here. And then the opposite, right? Left, we would increase. Oh, excuse me, right, we would decrease. Let's just fill these in real quick. Okay, left and left both increase. If it was a right shift, I would expect it to decrease. If it was a left shift, it would decrease. If it was a right shift, it would increase. Last couple here. A left shift would make it decrease. Right shift would make it increase. Finally, left shifts would make my temperature increase. Right shifts would make it decrease. Okay. So, lots of different examples there. What I want you guys to try out is if you haven't already, try out the next four on your own. Look at what's being added and removed. Hey, take a few seconds here to try this one out. I hope you pause the video if you need some time. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and zoom through these real quick. Hey, if, I removed some o if I removed some O2, I would expect this to shift to the right. If I removed some NO, I would expect it also to shift to the right. If I added some O2, I would expect it to go to the left. If I added some NO2, I would expect it to go to the left. Okay, all I did there is I followed the same rules that are part of our spreadsheet here, not spreadsheet, our PowerPoint. 
So finally, the very last example, right, let's take a look at this NACL. How is NACL gonna be fixing up this problem? Huh. This is kind of weird. So what I, want, what I like to notice here is that this NACL is not part of anything in this equation, okay? So kind of think about this like, oh, I don't know. Somebody take somebody right now in uh, in Indonesia is taking a nap. Right? Somebody in uh, somebody in Russia just said that the latest Star Wars movie was really great. They're wrong, but it really doesn't affect me at all. Okay. So when I have a situation where there is no part of my reaction that is being stressed, well, that kind of leaves our last option here. We can either do left, right, or no shift. Okay, so I would expect no shift. Okay. So the rest of these, how is it increasing and decreasing? Well, if there's no shift, there's no problem. There's no changes. Okay, nothing happens from this stress. So that was a lot of different example problems, a lot of different things you guys can think about. Okay. Lastly, you just need to go back and fill in some of these guys. Again, just following the same patterns that we did for our other examples. Okay. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to email or contact. I'll be posting a couple other videos up on Haiku to give you some more examples, some more different things to look at. Thank you guys so much for your attention, and I will see you guys in the next lesson.